Imam Muslim narrates a hadith on the authority of the companion uh, Tamim al Aus al Dari, or the famous companion of the Prophet, <coughs> radiallahu ta'ala anhu. His name was Tamim al Aus al Dari. And y'all know this hadith is famous hadith by him. His nickname was Abu Ruqayya, Tamim ibn Aus al Dari. The hadith where he said that he heard or that the Prophet said, Adinu Nasiha. Everybody know this hadith. The religion is Nasiha. The religion of Islam is sincerity or sincere advice, which it tends to be translated. And so the companions of the Prophet, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, kulna, they, where they said, We said, Liman ya Rasulullah. The deen is sincerity and sincere advice for who? He said, Lillah, for Allah. Wali kitabihi, and for his book, Wali Rasulihi, and for his messenger, Wali Immatul Muslimin wa Ammatihim, and for the leaders of the Muslims and the general folk, meaning the general Muslims. This hadith narrated by Muslim is well known to us. This hadith, the companion who narrates it, Abu Ruqayya at uh, Tamim al Tamim al Sadadi, he was the only companion of the Prophet. That Imam Muslim narrates that met the Dajjal. Do y'all know that about him? No. He met the Dajjal. Because the Dajjal is alive right now. He met him. He was on a ship and the ship went traveling and got lost by sea because of bad rain and weather. And they wound up on an island that they have never been to before. And he met him. And when he came back to Medina, he was a Kafir when he first met the Dajjal. He wasn't a Muslim. He came back. And he came to the Prophet because the Dajjal advised him to accept Islam. He said, follow Muhammad. So he goes back to Medina, comes to the Prophet's masjid. And the Prophet said, al jamir Salatu jamir Meaning the congregation prayer. So everybody came to the masjid. And when they came, he had, Darud, he had um, Abu Ruqayya, Tamim al-Saddari tell his story. Of his experience with meeting the Dajjal. And how the Dajjal invited him to... To follow, to accept Islam and follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and told him the story of him coming out when he does come out. So this is Azim kissa to Azima. You know, as I said, Tamim al Dadi qabala al Dajjal. So we understand from this, this man when it comes to this hadith, he see the importance of nasiha, which take us to what is the meaning of nasiha. What does nasiha mean? We always translate it to mean sincerity and sincere advice. Imam al Nawawi, rahimahullah, he says in this tremendous, in his one of his books that he had written, Imam al Nawawi, he mentioned this in his explanation of Sahih, Sahih Muslim. His explanation of Sahih Muslim is considered the best explanation. Of Sahih Muslim or the first foundational explanation of Sahih Muslim. There are many explanations for Sahih Muslim, but his is on the top of the list. And he says in the beginning of this hadith, he says, Had the hadith al Alim. He said, This is a tremendous hadith, Alim al Shatan. It has a tremendous status and station in the religion of Islam. Alayhi madarul Islam. He says, Upon this hadith, the whole religion. In circles around. You understand the whole religion? In circles around this hadith. But he talks about the definition of the word nasiha that he's mentioning. He says the word nasiha, there's no one word in Arabic that can define it. The word nasiha, you need many words in Arabic to define the word nasiha. That's how powerful this word is. Now that takes us to what was the origin of this word used for? Because in original Arabic. In original Arabic, the word nasiha from the Arabic word, from the verb nasaha, to give sincere advice. Nun sad ha. Nasaha. To give, and the word, that's the verb. Nasaha yansahu. Past tense verb, present tense per, verb. This word, what is its origin? Just pay attention to this because this is beneficial. The word nasiha. It is taken, it used to be used in Arabic. You were saying a sentence. Nasaha rajulu thawbah. Yani idha khawtahu. That a person mended his clothing. If he sold it. You know, he sold and fixed like a rip in his clothing. The word nasaha was used for that. To fix something. 
That's the origin of the word nasiha, to fix something. Also, فَتَشَبَّهُ فِعْلَ النَّاصِحْ فِيمَا يَتَحَرَّى مِنْ صَلَاحِ الْمَنْسُوحِ لَهُ بِمَا يَسُطُهُ عَنْ خَلَلِ الثَّوْبِ He says this word here is, was used to resemble, they resemble it to the action of a person who fixed something. He become known for fixing something. He, and the thing that he fixes, the mansuh, is the thing that was rectified and fixed. And he used that to remove the holes that was inside of his coving. So for that reason, they say, also, they use this word about honey. Nasahtul asal. I cleanse the honey. You know, anybody ever been familiar when you go to a, a farm, you got to go into the beehive, put the big outfit on, and you pull the hive out, and you have to abstract the honey from the beehive, and then take all that stuff out of it. The word nasiha was used to do this act. So the origin of nasiha is to fix, right, and to purify. Mm -hmm. And the religion, that's what Islam does. It fixes and it purifies. But it only does that if you strive to use it to do that. Now, so when we look at this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is what the deen is. And Imam Nabawi he says, Rahimahullah, Nasahtu al-asla idha safaytuhu min al-shama' He said, I have purified the honey when I removed the wax from the honey, the bee wax from the honey, <coughs> right? When you remove, because you ever tried, you ever, have you ever tasted bee wax before? It don't taste good. The wax itself. You got to remove that. Same thing. The dean removes from your chest and from your, your limbs, from your clothing, from your minds, from your eyesight, from your ears, all the things that's going to harm it from entering Jannah. You understand that? That's what the religion of Islam job is to do. That's why when Allah Taala says, "Yashri nafsahu bitiga amrudatillah," the one who sells his soul to Allah, seeking the pleasure of Allah, meaning he gives his soul to Allah by making himself do what Allah commands him, understanding these commandments, comprehending his commandments. And forcing yourself to practice it till it becomes you. You understand? Till that becomes your character. And this is what the deen of Islam. All of us, we born in this body in this room here, born Muslim. Yes. I was born Muslim. Everybody in this room, I think, was born Muslim, raised Muslim, right? But yet, being born Muslim isn't enough to be on the truth. You have to strive your best to give your soul to Allah. You have to, because the deen is nasiha, it's sincerity, it is purifying, it is removing from yourself the things that's going to destroy your relationship with Allah, from yourself and from your family, and then from your each other. Wallahi, this is the whole concept, that's why this deen, he said, madarul islam, islam is circles around this hadith, because he said, who was this deen? He said, ad-deenu nasiha. The companions understood this linguistically. It's, it's nasiha for who? It is purification for who? It is amend, it mends who? It fix who? Lillah. It's done for Allah's sake. Nobody else's sake. Lillah, right? That's what the Prophet said. Pay attention to this. Allah, we love for the sake of Allah. We love Allah for Allah. He's the only thing we love unconditionally. Nothing else. Kullu shay'in yuhab bi shuruq. Wallahu yuhab bi duni shuruq. Bi adam shuruq. Allah is loved unconditionally. Wa kullu ma ada Allah yuhabbu bi shuruq. Everything, or bi shartin wahid. Everything else other than Allah is love with a condition. What is that condition? Ma had the shart. What is that condition? You love that thing for Allah. You love that thing for Allah. Fillah. For the sake of Allah. That's how you love everything else. I love you, Akhi. And what does that mean, loving for Allah? I love him. I love her. Based upon their obedience. The more they're obedient to Allah, the greater my love is for them. The more they're distant from disobedience of Allah, the more my love grows for them. 
The less they are obedient, the less my love is for them. The less my loyalty is to them. The more they're disobedient, the more less I love them. So our love goes up and down for each other. And the Mewadi, no one illustrated that type of love like the messenger of Allah. He didn't love no human being from amongst the men like he loved Abu Bakr. And he didn't love a woman like he loved any like he loved Khadija. <clears throat> and then after Khadija's death, like Aisha. Why? Because of their deen. So because of that, Abu Bakr got special pr privileges because of his obedience. Not because of who he was, but because of his obedience. <laughs> what he showed of obedience, what he made transparent of staying away from <clears throat> sin, what he showed of calling to the book of Allah, what he showed of living the book of Allah, what he showed of living the sunnah of the prophet and calling to the sunnah of the prophet. Love increased for him. Not like he didn't have that same love for Umar. His, Umar, his love for Umar was not like his love for Abu Bakr. But his love for Umar was better than any other companion. You have to do the same thing with your wives. Be as wajin with our wives. Be amwalina with our wealth by using that wealth to help our akhirah. Like this. So, deenu nasiha. The deen of sincerity. Lillah. For Allah. Meaning, I love this for everything. For I love Allah for Allah, and I love everything else for the sake of Allah. For the sake of Allah. I love Allah because Allah is the only one that can purify this stuff in my chest. I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the only one can fix what's in my head that I can't get out of it. Allah. We have to understand it. The sunnah of the Prophet is the only, the Muhammad is the only human being I love. Like Muhammad. No one I love like Rasulullah. And I love him for the sake of Allah. Because he's the best person to have taqwa. He's the best person for practicing this deen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like this we have to love. And we love for the book of Allah. And we'll talk about that tomorrow inshallah. sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.